Welcome back, everyone. We're Simply Bitcoin. We break down the news, the daily fail, meme review, software releases, hardware releases, and the pleb sites. Joining us today, we've got two fellow Bitcoiners, return guest Fumble McBumble, and we've got a new guest, Margo, also known as Jin Urso on Twitter, fellow Bitcoiner joining us. Thank you both for joining us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. All right, let's dive into the numbers. Let's do it, Nico. Number time. Brought to you by Noddle. They make some of the best Bitcoin nodes, like the Noddle Dojo, the one I'm holding it in my in my hand. It's in red. That means it's very fast also made of metal remember guys if you don't run your own bitcoin node you're trusting someone else's that's a big no-no for privacy run your own version of bitcoin core and the lightning network all in the comfort of your own home get yourself a bitcoin node today like the noddle at the time of this recording the block height is 737,895 the bitcoin price 29,735 chain rewrite day 757 total public lightning capacity almost 4k 3,911.64 btc moscow time 3363 blocks to the happening 102,105 and the samurai whirlpool unspent capacity samurai whirlpool is a coin joiner collaborative spend it is not a mixing service and the unspent capacity for that pool is 4772.98 numbers numbers again <laughs> numbers again well guys check this out look some some things to talk about during the numbers segment we're going to do a follow-up to you know the the world economic forum that's currently happening in davos the hypocrisy of these world elites the, the BS that is the whole ESG stuff, rules for the, I mean, yeah, rules for the and not for me, that famous saying, you guys are, uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. Before, I got this really interesting screenshot, and if you want to know, if you're late to Bitcoin, uh, I've seen this, I've, I've seen this shown many times, right, this is the Bitcoin adoption curve, right? Don't take this as, you know, as, as factual, but you can kind of get a pretty good feeling of where we are. And if you think we're still late, if you think you're late, right, this is the innovators. I feel like these are the people that got in before 2015. I would say the early adopters are really people that got into the, in the 2017 cycle. And here's the chasm before the first early majority gets in, right? So just just don't be in the laggard section anyways i just wanted to show that i thought that was really interesting anyways i tweeted this out a couple days ago and i said they do not care about bitcoin's environmental impact what they want is to get to decide what energy use is okay and what isn't i'm going to go back to this by the way this isn't going to be the last time i'm going to talk about this i'm going to talk about this during the news segment i have some more evidence and here is Elon saying, which it doesn't make sense to me, right? Ex Exxon, which is a huge oil and gas company, is rated top 10 best in the world for environmental social justice, ESG, by the S&P 500, while Tesla didn't make the list. ESG is a scam. It has been weaponized by phony social justice warriors. I believe that as well, because how could it be that one of the largest oil and gas companies is so-called ESG compliant, but Elon Musk Tesla, which is literally create, he's the one innovating. He's the, he's responsible for this electrical vehicle revolution that you know is going to help people get off of you know uh, fossil fuel using cars, which would potentially help the environment. But he's not awarded an environmental social justice approval, I guess. And uh, it, more hypocrisy, right? This is the UN Special Envoy for Climate Action. Mark Carney pushes my microphone away, trying to avoid scrutiny over his blatant hypocrisy and being a part of such a huge carbon footprint in Davos, right? Remember, we showed you videos yesterday. They're taking private jets. They're taking, you know, gas guggling, expensive luxury vehicles. And here again, here's more hypocrisy. So this makes you believe, right? Is, is the ESG thing really as a form to control people or is it really about the environment? This tweet by Elon Musk about Exxon being, you know, so-called 
not uh, more ESG friendly than Tesla, even though Tesla's an electric vehicle company. And again, more hypocrisy from Davos. Anyways, let's check out this video. How do you, how do you justify the, how does the UN climate envoy justify the massive carbon footprint here today? To set this up, this fake city for a, a weak event. How did you, how did you get here? Did you I fly? Walked. Look at the cars. You walked? Yeah. Did you come on a private jet? Of course not. No, so how do you justify this? Look at all of this. For one week event, the carbon footprint is huge. Don't you think that's a bit hypocritical? Oh, drop it. No? Drop it. Look, there is uh, lots of progress being made, but look, I'm not doing a stand-up interview, okay? So, Why not? You're I walking that way anyways. I think people around the world, you know, this year they say regaining trust. I do, That's the whole purpose. I do lots of uh, media. Friendly media. No, I do, no, God no. The ones that are here invited. Look, I'm doing, no, that, I'm doing no media at this right, Can we sit down and I'll, I'll make a time with you and uh, answer some actual tough questions? You can, you can make a request for a meeting and... So uh, you can deny it. Uh, look, as I say, with everyone, as with everyone else, you can do the same thing as with the, uh, the guy from True North. Yeah, oh, you, he's, he's a good guy, but I'm, I'm, I'm a good guy. I'm sure you're a good guy as well. <laughs> All people are good. I've got, it's absolutely right. But uh, but the whole world is looking at this now, going, "You're a pack of hypocrites," and you're the you're at the top of the chain there. How do you, what would you answer people? Just give me one answer to the people. Take care, sir. So, um more of what we've been talking about this is what elon musk is referencing right it's rules for thee but not for me um and yeah look what, what does this have to do with bitcoin because it's a bitcoin show after all remember guys if you control the energy you control people the whole esg is an attack vector on bitcoin's energy usage we've seen it used by in you know by the democrats in the united states we've seen it used by european politicians right so yeah, and I'm not the only one saying this. We also have James Lindsay, which is a you know predominant conservative commentator, also saying that this whole ESG stuff has very nefarious intentions, and I don't think it has anything to do with the environment. And it is a potential attack vector, and they are using it as an attack vector against Bitcoin. Anyways, Jean, I know you have some experience with, uh, you know, and especially working at the Bitcoin Policy Center. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, well, it's the it is the Bitcoin Policy Institute, and I'm I a apologize. fellow there. And some of my comments today will not reflect the Bitcoin Policy Institute. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's really interesting with with the, these Davos people. And and I want to be clear that you can care about climate change and also disagree and see the hypocrisy of the Davos group as well as I personally do, and. Uh, you know, flying around in private jets. I mean, the reality is that these very, very wealthy elites are some of the greatest emitters of carbon emissions. Like they are responsible for like much of the emissions that we have right now in the atmosphere. So it is hypocritical. And yeah, I mean, there is a, a great misunderstanding around energy usage with Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining, what purpose it serves. And I think it really just comes down to whether or not you value Bitcoin. If you think it serves absolutely no purpose, if you think it's just speculation, then you're never going to believe that any amount of energy use, any amount of kilowatt hour is worth going toward Bitcoin. That's the reality. So it's really, you have to, there, there's a lot of education that still needs to happen. And it's unfortunate because people like Elizabeth Warren, who have based their career on going after the banking industry, and in particular after the financial crisis of 2008, that, that, that they completely missed the mark on Bitcoin because it is a, a critique of this same system that she claims and others like her claim to oppose. So yeah, it is it is problematic, definitely. And yeah, in a way it is it is an attack vector on Bitcoin because it's it's probably the hardest narrative to fight, I think. It it's just uh it's one that never dies. <laughs> and a lot of people rely on old FUD that has been completely debunked, including the Mora et al. paper that claimed that Bitcoin was going to melt the planet in two years, you know, would, would make Bitcoin, uh, sorry, Bitcoin would make uh, 
global warming hit two degrees Celsius within a decade, right? That was the claim. And many uh, other scientists, there was three papers published in the same journal that said, no, this is the methodology is really bad. So yeah, it's, it's a, it's a never ending battle, but hoping that we can make some progress and change some minds on this with our work. So we had Natalie Burnell on the show, um, about a week ago and she kind of had the same opinion where it's a lack of education um phil and i have been covering this subject every single day um and we have come to believe that it's a little bit more nefarious than lack of education i'm going to get to that during the news and i would love to get more of your thoughts but fumble what are your thoughts on these hypocritical elites in davos Burning all that jet fuel, but telling the peasants, no, no, you got to own nothing and be happy. Eat your bucks. Shut up and eat your bucks. Yeah, I'm I'm also very skeptical of ESG. I think it's a, a tool that's used by the establishment for, for their own purposes. Um, it may be an indicator of how, how connected you are with the establishment, where Exxon is top 10, whereas Tesla has recently fallen out of favor. So they're, they're out. Um, um, and seeing seeing the Davos um, reminds me of um, uh, I think I think it was um, some climate conference in Glasgow in Scotland uh, in mm-hmm. the last couple of years. Yes, and they 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 had like people carriers picking up people from the airport and taking them to the conference, and they were all like Teslas and stuff, but they yeah. were all like uh, recharged with like diesel generators around the corner. <laughs> you know, so there's a, there's a clear kind of like smoke and mirrors. Uh, they like to kind of uh, give this image, um, and um, and yeah, you know, I think I think we really lack nuance from the whole discussion. Like, uh, we can both recognize that ESG is a scam and used by the state to uh, extend their power, and as well, all acknowledge that climate change, whether we might, you know, squabble about speci- very specific predictions. It's it's an established fact, and uh, and so I, I don't you know having that nuance is not you know doesn't mean that um, um, you know we we can't uh, agree um, you know on certain points here. And I also wanted to say like um, uh, it's been a long-standing like tactic of the fossil fuel industry to um, fund the the propaganda to individualize climate change. To the fact that, like, you know, I saw I saw a clip of of um, some guy in Davos. I think you have already showed it on maybe yesterday's show about, um, or maybe it was today about um, um, they're using technology to they have an individual tracker of your carbon. Mm-hmm. So you know, putting the blame onto individuals when really like there's massive systemic like institutional level uh, abuses. Um, you know, I saw I saw a tweet from uh, Troy Cross uh, recently, also from the um, Bitcoin Policy Institute, and um, said uh, the largest U.S. banks and asset managers are responsible for financing the equivalent of almost two billion tons of carbon dioxide in uh, 2020, making the U.S. financial sector the world's fifth largest emitter if it were a country. So they're they're good at you know using their their, their capital to misdirect us, to blame us, blame the individual make us all look at the plebs and blame them um, and redirect uh, attention from themselves. Absolutely. Phil. I, I, yeah, would, I would just quickly add that I wrote up uh, an article based off of this, the report that Troy referenced, and it's called, it's called Bitcoin versus the banks, which is better for the planet. And so you can see that on my, on my medium account, uh, which is linked on, uh, on my, Twitter profile. So yeah, so I basically just do a, a comparison using the numbers from that report. And you can decide based off of what I've written, whether Bitcoin or the banks are better for the planet. I, I know the choice that I've made <laughs> says that it's Bitcoin, but you know, someone else might disagree. Absolutely. And we're definitely going to use that as source material in the upcoming shows. Thanks for letting us know. And of course, we'll put uh, Jean's all his, all her information where you can find her down in the link description. Anyways, Phil, closing thoughts, my friend. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think you guys killed it with the comments. I, I think that that was well rounded. The only thing that I can add is to quote the gentleman in the video: "They're doing a lot of good." 
<laughs> just remember that, okay? Everything's justified because they're doing a lot of good. Yeah, yeah the yeah. hypocrisy's <laughs> astounding. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. You eat bugs, we'll go and fly private jets. But anyways, Phil, it's time for... <laughs> the Daily Fail. Brought to you by Swan. Check them out. SwanBitcoin.com. It is a Bitcoin stacking platform by fellow plebs. You've got automated Bitcoin savings plans, instant purchases, serving clients of any size. They've got an app that's coming out soon. It's going to be lit. The link is down below. All right, this is going to be a little bit uh, change of gears from, from the climate change and from the stuff that we're going to be getting into in the news. Um, yeah, we are going to dive into... We haven't looked at some, some, some BSV fail in a while, so I figured, why not? Why not? We're going we're gonna to enjoy some pain here. Let's, let's dive into some pain. All right, so for the people who hang out on Twitter and have sat in spaces, you may have run into this gentleman, Hector Lopez, likes to join the Bitcoin spaces, but is a BSVer and likes to shill the BSV narrative. And that's what we're looking at today in this tweet. Let's take a look. There are 1.2 billion people in Africa. There is 350,000 available transactions on Bitcoin BTC right now per day. If everyone in Africa wanted to buy one thing using BTC tomorrow, it will take over nine years to process all of those transactions. So I look, I am not the best at math. OK, I'm really not the best at math, but I, I did some really simple math to figure out seven transactions per second and we're at over 604,800, which is completely irrelevant because it's the base layer, okay? The base layer was never meant for your coffee and your bubble gum and our garbage, okay? That, that's, that's complete nonsense, but anyway. So Hector completely omits the Lightning Network, okay? Like, it doesn't even exist, but we're going to go take a look at the Lightning white paper for, well, actually, the, the Lightning Network website, OK, let's just take a look right here. The scalability of lightning capable of millions to billions of transactions per second across the network. Capacity blows away legacy payment rails by many orders of magnitude. Attaching payment per action click is now possible without custodians. And keep in mind, this was written several years ago by Tajay Drija and Joseph Poon, who are you who um, you are going to see in a second in a video with Craig Wright. This was one of the rare instances, okay, where where Vitalik actually <laughs> really pulled a, a good move and um it was it was actually pretty epic to see. But anyways, before we before we dive into before we dive into that video, let's just quickly continue on the Lightning Network. The Lightning Network is going to change how you think about Bitcoin and this was written in 2021. Desiree Dickerson, who we've had on this show, okay, she's the CEO of Thunder Games, but at the time she was at Lightning Labs and she was vice president of operations, whose low-key genius background includes a smattering of endocrinology, biophysics, genetics, and helping the government launch the Affordable Care Act, which made her disenchanted with the government. Interesting. <laughs> setting up a government, setting up a government function made you disenchanted. Who would have thought? People say it's two years out. It's really not. There are applications where you don't have to think about nodes. I use lightning every single day. This was in 2021, people. OK, and the BSVers are still telling you that this doesn't work. Lightning currently has a maximum throughput of 25 million transactions per second compared with on-chain throughput of seven transactions per second. That's why I used the seven transactions per second to do my math. I don't know what Hector used. And it expects that to increase as the network grows. She says that Lightning Network settlement is instant instead of taking 10 to 60 seconds on-chain. So you see, the shitcoin narrative completely falls apart when Lightning comes into the picture, okay? And the other piece to this, okay, this is what the disingenuous, specifically the BSV people, what they don't tell you, okay, what they do not tell you about BSV, okay, this is already back last year. Last year alone, BSV was attacked four times in July alone. Imagine storing your value on this network. Now, why? Why would you store your value on this network? You wouldn't. Why not? Because it has no security. And if you take a look, okay, this is the BSV versus Bitcoin hash rate. And you can see it here, the all time, this tiny little red line that you can barely see at the bottom of the screen. This is the BSV hash rate. It is a complete zombie. Nobody is securing this shit fork. 
no one. Okay, and you've got guys like him that come into the they come into Bitcoin spaces and they put out tweets that try to scam you into thinking that you need to be buying this fake shitcoin. Now I'm gonna end the I'm, I'm gonna end this rant with this this video right here. Okay, this is I'm not gonna show the whole thing because a lot of the sound at the beginning is kind of roughed up. So we just need to we just need to see the the signal piece. Okay. Why is, why is this fraud allowed to speak at this conference? Yeah. yeah. That's Joseph Kuhn, by the way, the guy who wrote the lightning white paper, shaking Vitalik's hand. Negative probability means you pay the other people. Instead of the selfish miner earning a benefit, the honest miner does. I wrote the Lightning Network paper. I straight up don't understand your presentation. I'm sure the rest of the audience is not as well. I wrote the Lightning paper. And I don't understand what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> that says it all. So the whole point, right? The whole circling point that I'm coming back to, these people are completely disingenuous with their intentions to get you to pay attention to this ridiculous message of BSV is the real Bitcoin. It is not the real Bitcoin. It is a shit fork of a shit fork. It is a fork of Bcash. Okay. Bcash is a fork. It's complete nonsense. And all they do is they use this this ridiculous excuse where they choose a couple of words out of the white paper and say, these words are Bitcoin only. And he is Satoshi. Look, this guy's been called out multiple times. We keep showing you over and over again how the network cannot be secured and it gets attacked multiple times. OK, this thing is complete garbage. Do not pay attention to that type of noise. Steer clear from the scammers like Hector who come into the Twitter spaces and try to fool you into shitcoin. <laughs> That's my sermon. <laughs> yeah, man. Great job. You know, the uh, CSW is a fraud. I uh, just want to give a shout out to uh, which we don't uh, we don't see a lot of things. Uh, we don't agree with a lot of his methods, but shout out to Peter McCormack for putting up that good fight. Uh, Hot or not isn't that good fight, you know, uh, in terms of their in, they're in litigation with CSW. Uh, very expensive litigation, I might add. It looks like uh, uh, Peter McCormack is almost out of it. Um, I know it costs him a lot of money. I know Hodlnot's going to cost him a lot of money. So I wish both of them the best. And at the end of this, hopefully, you know, the world could see that this guy's a fraud. He's a dangerous fraud. He's hurting Bitcoiners. And, you know, uh, eventually he's going to get exposed. The truth is going to come out. You know, unfortunately, he has a... a a large war chest because of Calvin Ivory, or I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Uh, so yeah, this guy is a threat to Bitcoin. He's an enemy of humanity because if you're if you're a threat to Bitcoin, you're an enemy of humanity in my eyes. So uh, you know, hopefully uh, they could win their their cases. So shout out Peter McCormack and shout out the Space Cat. Anyways, Gene, did I say it right? Jen. Jen. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Jen. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Oh uh, well, so. My computer crashed momentarily, so I lost a little bit of it, but I'm back. And I mean, I mean BSV, Craig, right? It's a little bit of a joke, purposely ignoring the benefits of player two applications is pretty ridiculous. And I'm more likely to believe that John Nash is Satoshi than Craig Wright, to be honest. <laughs> I'm most likely to believe that my dog is Satoshi than Craig Wright. <laughs> Your dog maybe, probably is more Satoshi. Than maybe, your, <laughs> maybe your dog is Satoshi. Anyways, um, Fumble, any closing thoughts, my friend? Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of, um, in a way, links the last segment in terms of, like, at this point in 2022, um, the education is out there. Like, the knowledge is out there. How can you still uh, play this game and plead ignorance to uh, whether Bitcoin has a purpose and therefore, you know, its energy cost is beneficial or like the 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 uh, the development of of lightning, which has been around for a long time now. Um, you know, I think uh, they seem to be willing to destroy their their credibility long term, uh, clinging to these failed projects um, that are extremely centralized. I don't even know how many nodes uh, BSV has, for example, but um, I, I can imagine they're probably in one, in one house, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and they, they, you know, they tout out, look, the hash rate does not lie. 
Okay. And and if you want to, you know, look uh, about how – look, the Bitcoin hash rate, which I've talked about many times, right, it not only represents network security, right, because it would theoretically – you would have to essentially match or overcome the amount of hash rate. And hash rate represents the amount of computational power backing up Bitcoin, the amount of ASICs currently backing Bitcoin, right? There's no way to know the actual hash rate. It has to be an estimation, of course. But um, it, it also it also signifies the amount of capital that's being invested into mining Bitcoin, right? If you look at BSV or if you look at Bitcoin Cash, that number has been static. That means that the real money, people that have real money are not looking into invest in infrastructure that mine those coins. Why? Because they don't believe it has a future. Look at how the publicly traded, publicly traded Bitcoin mining companies have done. Look at Riot. I think it's up over a thousand percent in the last two years some crazy percentage right and that signifies to me is that big money real money have faith in the future of bitcoin unlike bsv unlike bitcoin cash that being said phil it's time for the daily meme review brought to you by citadel 21 they make the best bitcoin cultural zine it's pure pleb signal in here stories comics articles by actual Bitcoiners, every artwork is different, every volume, and they're scarce. There's only a thousand physical copies made per volume. So get your print, prints of Citadel 21 today. All right, everybody, welcome to the Bitcoin meme review, where we review Bitcoin memes. Memes play an essential role in this narrative trench warfare that we experience every single day in the battlegrounds of the internet. If if tweets are bullets, memes are artillery. Anyways, let's check out this first meme by MF underscore hodl. Bear markets create Bitcoiners. Bitcoiners create bull markets. Bull markets create shit coiners. Shit coiners create bear markets. And the cycle absolutely repeats itself. I completely agree. Bear markets, be, your shit coins get crushed and you realize there, there really is one true king. With that, it creates a bull market and the cycle repeats itself. Anyways, moving on. Next meme by Hodulus. Central bank blowing up the money supply be like... Central banks, Putin did it, inflation. <laughs> very, very good meme. All right, moving on by... It's my doppelganger. Uh, look, Phil has absolutely been slaying it. I, in my opinion, I called Phil the big, the shitcoin slayer. Him and Corey Clipson are going head-to-head. -head. They're going to have uh, you know, a, a, a jungle or mumble in the jungle, whatever. The, the rumble in the jungle one day. And then uh, hopefully we could put him in a cage match and we could decide who is the true shitcoin slayer. Anyways, Copernicus, which is Phil's alter ego. And he is the demon slayer from that uh, from that video game. I forget what it's called. Oh man, it's such a good video game. Anyways, Avalanche, Cordano, XRP, anything on Coinbase, and Phil is slaying them. And the name of the game is Doom. I just remembered. All right, moving on. This is Adam back. Uh, he's back. And uh, again, you know, just shitting on this dude. This this was crazy. Uh, a Vitalik was just you know reminiscing on you know what things he he feels upset about, and it, it just the central planning and the hubris in those tweets are absolutely crazy. I really recommend reading that thread. We don't have enough time to get to it, but I am gonna read what Adam Back says. He says as as. A sample of one Bitcoiner, I identify with the plebs. And this is why we love Adam. And systematically reject the confused central planning of hubris-fueled, self-proclaimed elites. I believe in bottom-up, robust design bases that work. Reject the master archetype hypothesis. And, and honestly, this hasn't worked in the last hundred years. It always shows that the free market... Millions upon millions of people making their own decisions on what's best for them does much better than any central planning elite <coughs> like the World Economic Forum. Anyways, here is uh, Adam back as the Terminator. He's Bach. No, I'm going to read it in, in – I'm going to do the German accent. He's Bach. I'm Adam Bach. Okay, anyways. Um, the next one by R RD underscore BTC. And there's a lot of them. Okay, I'm going to fight these no-coiners online. Damn, they're – uh Re regarded regarded there we go thank you all right next one by rothmus dumb f juice 
people that think more regulations and taxes will fix anything. It's so true, man. Anyways, uh, last one by Brecky. Shout out Brecky from Swan Bitcoin. Awesome company. Anyways, let's check it out. When you take financial advice from Rugpull and Real Vision. Oh, I got to back it up. Here we go. <laughs> Anyways, awesome, awesome memes. Wow, wow. Phil, bringing in the heat. Pick some awesome memes. Shout out to the plebs because it, these memes would not be possible without you guys for that. I'm going to give it the sticker that comes with the cold card, the no shit coin inside. And if and this is matching the branding from the old Intel things. It would say Intel inside says no shit coin inside. I thought it was clever. Anyways, Phil, what would you give those memes? I just I just remembered that there used to be a sticker that used to say Intel inside, idiot outside. Anyways, um, I digress, and I am giving it my extra 3D printed lightning. That's right. Shout out to Crypto Cloaks. He made these for me, and that's right. That's what hey, I'm giving it. It deserves that. These deserve it. Very, very good score. Anyways. Gene. Gin. Gin. Ah! <laughs> Why? Gin. It's okay. Gin, third like, time's the charm. Like, like, right the, the like the alcohol. Gin. Okay. Now I know. Gin. Yeah, I like gin. Like I'm, a gin and tonic. I'm so sorry. I'm like, I'm like, say it right. Say it right. Say it right. <laughs> oh, I can't read it right. Gin. Okay. There we go. I'm going to get it right this time. Gin, what would you give those memes? Uh, give it one of my pencil shaving devices here. That looks like a box cutter. It, 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 it could be. <laughs> I use it to sharpen pencils. <laughs> it looks very dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Gin is resourceful. Uh, I like that. Uh, I think that's the first box cutter <laughs> score we've gotten. They, they, th <laughs> those pencils are really sharpened, that's for sure. Anyways, Fumble, what would you give those awesome memes? So, um, I've got I've got this onion that's like sprouting <laughs> right now. Um, so, I'll, I'll give that. A sprouting onion. Awesome. Very good scores for some awesome memes. Guys, we want to know if you agree with our scores. Do you like the memes? Let us know which one's your favorite. Comment, comment, comment down below. It helps with the mysterious YouTube algorithm. Of course, make sure to subscribe to us on alternative video platforms like Rumble.com and our personal favorite, BitcoinTV.com. They don't censor there because it's Bitcoin TV. And join our Telegram group. It's a party in there. You can link us some Bitcoin memes to review so we can review them on the meme review. But anyways, Phil, it's time for the Daily News. Brought to you by CryptoCloaks.com. They make some of the best 3D printed Bitcoin merch like the famous 3D printed Bitcoin grenade toy comes in any custom color you'd like. You want it in blue, you can get it in blue, but you want you want it in gold? It also comes in gold. You know that pisses Peter Schiff off because there's the Bitcoin logo on it. They also make really cool 3D printed Bitcoin stuff like the 3D printed Bitcoin honey badger. And you can take advantage of the promo code down below to get 5% off anything off the CryptoCloaks.com online store. All right, guys, welcome to the second part of the progressive case for Bitcoin. We believe at Simply Bitcoin that Bitcoin is all inclusive. It's apolitical by nature, right? So we like to get everyone's opinions from all sides. Remember, Bitcoin means different things to different people. And I think that these types of episodes are very important because of that. So I'm going to first start it out with this preface, or I'm going to read a little bit of... of um, Jin's, there we go. I remember the alcohol. I said the name correctly. Jin's article, she wrote this for Bitcoin Magazine. The name of the article is Progressives and Bitcoin are not opposed. We believe in that. Anyways, the article says the reality is not that Bitcoin needs to be rebranded to, 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 re to fit a progressive narrative. It is that Bitcoiners and non-Bitcoiners alike need to realize that while the network's genesis block was a political attack on the central banking system, that this sentiment is not exclusive to American libertarianism. This is why progressives are in the Bitcoin space, because we know that Bitcoin is for everyone. And we're going to make sure that everyone, not just libertarians, know that there's a way to exit the system and that Bitcoin could help us find that way. I fundamentally agree. However, the, the troubling pattern that, I uh, that I've picked up over the last couple months, and I would love to get your perspective, Jin, 
and fumble, right, is that when you look at the po political support from the fiat parties, what we've started to notice is that there's clear there's a clear partisan divide. It looks like the left wing, not only in Europe, also in the United States, also in China, right, is vehemently against Bitcoin, right? But we agree in the in you know in the progressive sense that Bitcoin helps the underprivileged, Bitcoin helps the the underbanked, right? So let me go a little bit through this, right? These are again, it's not black and white, right? But it, there's a clear trend, right? Uh, the Elizabeth Warren, Sherrod Brown, Sheldon Whitehouse, Bill Cassidy, he's a Republican, Jeff Merkley, all Democrats except for one Republican. And on the pro crypto Bitcoin shitcoin senators, it's all Republican. We know Cynthia Lummis, we know Ted Cruz, we know Pat Toomey. So it's a troubling development, but it's also not in the US. It's not also in the federal government in the US. This is also on a state level. And again, it's pushed by the left wing. New York is the latest state to consider banning proof of work mining. Members of the New York State Assembly Environmental Cons Conservation Committee voted in favor of Assembly Bill that establishes a a member a member sorry phil sorry guys you guys know nico can't read but you can read on the screen on cryptocurrency mining operations that use proof of work authentication methods to validate blockchain transactions now i used to have the perspective that Jin has right maybe they're just not educated on the matter however after covering this for a couple of months and seeing the same thing happen over and over again we found a nail in the coffin as we found the smoking gun as why we believe that's not the case. Anyways, moving on. It's not only in the United States. This also happened in Europe, right? A last minute attempt by European lawmakers to potentially enact a backdoor soft ban on Bitcoin failed on Monday in a closely watched vote by followed by crypto enthusiasts. And guess who this was pushed by? Conservative and free market liberals united to vote down the amendment 30 to 23 in favor with six app stations styming the efforts by the Social Democrats and the Greens. Again, it's a left wing party pushing and going against Bitcoin. Now, the argument, of course, could have been made, hey, perhaps... You know, these parties weren't educated on the matter. Perhaps they really care about the environment. But then we ran into this article and it really, I don't know what other conclusion you can come to other than these people are more concerned about control. Let me make my case, right? Name of the article is Bitcoin mining in Norway gets the green light as the proposed man rejected, right? Um, the proposed... Uh, the, the proposal to ban uh, Bitcoin mining in Norway was first suggested in March this year by the Red Norway's Communist Party. In this week's vote, the proposal was overturned as only Norway's left-leaning parties, including the Socialist Left Party, the Red Party, and the Greed Party, would support a ban on cryptocurrency mining. So, left-wing parties in Norway, left-wing parties in Europe, left-wing parties in the United States, left-wing, obviously China only has one party. Now, Here's the smoking gun. Cointelegraph previously reported that Norway is a green oasis for Bitcoin mining, boasting abundant hydropower and low energy prices, particularly in the north. 100% or almost 98% of the electricity generated in Norway is generated by renewable energies. 100% of the energy used by Bitcoin mining in Norway is by renewable energies. So if it's not hurting the environment, why are they still against it in the first place? So it's only led us to believe, and again, I'm biased because I come from Venezuela, right? I come from an ex-socialist country, and I happen to have the privilege to be able to migrate to the United States, right? I believe it's because it's something they cannot control. So really sucks. I know that, of course, this doesn't represent all left-wingers. It doesn't pro pro represent all progressives, right? But you cannot deny that the establishment political left-wing parties have it out for Bitcoin. And that article from Norway pointing out that 100% of Bitcoin mining is powered by renewables makes you ask, why are they still against it if it's not bad for the environment? What's going on here?
Jin, what are your thoughts on this? Okay, so we have to be clear about a few things here. First of all, the Democratic Party is not a left-wing party. The Democratic Party is really a center corporate party that is governed by a lot of corporate money. And much of the Democratic Party in the United States is really about presenting uh, an identity politic framework and not really a class framework. So for them, their reasons to be opposed to Bitcoin, I think, are different from what you will see uh, in the European Parliament. And I'll touch on that in just a moment. But uh, in the United States, right, I, I think that a lot of the, the concern over Bitcoin is around energy usage and environmental impact. And as we've discussed at the beginning of this show, uh, there's this is a major attack vector against Bitcoin. So in a way, these people are also being played because they're only reading what they what they see in the news in New York Times or whatever. And so for them, this is like, I care about the climate. And you're telling me that this is going to melt the planet. This is awful. It has to be stopped. The other thing now for people who identify as some form of socialist or somebody who cares about social welfare or who is skeptical about markets is going to see only the front face of Bitcoin, which is the trading that happens on the central exchanges. So for them and, and all of the shit coins that are surrounded that, that Bitcoin is surrounded by. And so for them, what they're seeing is, is speculation. And for anyone who identifies as anti-capitalist to any degree is going to be opposed to speculation because for them, and, and I think that we can generally agree that speculation is, is very destabilizing, even in a free market, even if you are for a free market. So if their only interaction with Bitcoin is to see speculation, they're going to be opposed to it and they're not going to find any value to Bitcoin. So I think that's why looking at Norway and looking at in the European Parliament and seeing the parties that are opposed to Bitcoin, even if the energy sources are 100% renewable, they will oppose it because they see it as a tool of of the capitalists and they see it as a tool of speculation, which is only destabilizing economic systems. And that is why they will oppose it. And this is why it's really an education thing. And it's really that for people who come from these backgrounds, you have to actually say, no, it's not really about speculation. There is something else going on with Bitcoin. And then you really have to drive home the narrative that Alex Gladstein has pushed through check your financial privilege. And that I think cuts across towards people who are on the left because it, it, it points out that actually Bitcoin can help people, especially in situations where you're living under a repressive government that is stealing from the wealth of the people. And so that is the narrative that I think is missing in a lot of the discussion, especially in the news. So if you only see the only two things you see when you read the news about Bitcoin is that the bubble is bursting, it's tulip mania, and it's melting the planet, you have no incentive for the left. For people on the right or Republicans in the United States, the immediate thought is like, oh, this is great because it's taking the power away from the, the central banks. And, uh, and I'm all for deregulating. Let's deregulate, let's deregulate. I mean, part of that fits into the neoliberal narrative. And so for them, like, this is great. It, it makes it a little bit easier for them to, to, to see the appeal of Bitcoin. Although I don't, I also don't believe that they necessarily fully grasp the benefits of Bitcoin, but it's an easy, a little bit of an easier path for them to get into Bitcoin. Now, there are some Democrats who do like crypto in general, like Cory Booker, for example, and Ro Khanna, he's in the House of Representatives. Cory Booker is in the Senate. So, and there are, there is like a congressional cryptocurrency caucus that at least I think half of the members are from the Democratic Party. So it's not exactly true that there is a full divide across party lines in this case. So I don't think it's necessarily that nefarious. I think it's just that the narrative that needs to reach this particular group is not as mainstream as it should be in terms of the content that is produced around Bitcoin. A oh, beautiful answer. And I really appreciate your perspective. It's it's awesome to hear this perspective. Um, 
And yeah, no, I, 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 perhaps I should have emphasized it in a little bit more. I did say it's not black and white, right? There are Republican senators that are, are opposed to crypto and Bitcoin, and there are Democratic senators and congresswomen and congressmen that do support it. But there, the trend is, though, is that the majority of senators and congressmen and women that are against it happen to be on the left-hand side, and the ones that are for it happen to be on the right-hand side. Anyways, uh, before I get fumble and and more of, of your thoughts, Jin, I wanted to get to a little bit more parts of this awesome article that you wrote. Again, the name of the article is Progressives and Bitcoin Are Not Opposed, and I also agree with that. Anyways, um, I have some highlighted parts. Progressive is really an umbrella term that lumps together many left-leaning political ideologies under a set of demands that we deem to, to be inalienable rights of any human. These are education, health care, a living wage, and housing. Okay, Jin, how do you propose to do that without wealth redistribution? How do I propose to do that without wealth redistribution? How, so if, if, if progressives, right, um, deem to have inalienable rights of any human and and those inalienable rights are education health care a living wage and housing how specifically education and, and health care how do you propose to implement that without some sort some form of wealth redistribution for example in europe the way that they're able to fund for example a lot of europeans have large social uh, welfare programs right uh, like you know free health care, but it's actually funded through taxes or, uh, you know, free education also funded through taxes. Bitcoin makes wealth redistribution very, very difficult. So perhaps you can convince half of society to go along with and, you know, go along with the taxes to fund those programs. But there's going to be a big portion of society with the benefits of Bitcoin that are just not going to go along with it. So how how does that work? So I would first argue that we already have wealth redistribution in this society, and we can look at it in a couple of ways. One, we can look at it from the perspective of rent seeking. We can look at it from the perspective of debt, and we can look at it from what the Federal Reserve has done with quantitative easing by inflating assets, which the majority of Americans don't hold, right? So if you're most of your labor and the the payment that you receive from your work comes from actually engaging in productive efforts in society, like by creating things or working, you know, you know, uh, in services or exchanging goods like that, that doesn't accrue interest. But if you're somebody who makes money just by holding someone else's debt or, or being a landlord or whatever, then that's, a uh, you know, that's that's a form of distribution of wealth in a way that is actually destabilizing to society. And we see that in particular through financialization, which has happened actually since we came off the Bretton Woods, right? We have seen an increase in financialization where, where finance has become a greater part of our national income or our GDP. And that can only happen through increasing interest, right? And and then inflation ends up coming into this, right, as a, a sort of a silent tax. And if you look at it, I was just looking at this actually today, uh, totally unrelated to the conversation, but the, the, the bottom income earners in the United States in 2021 uh, had felt the worst effects of inflation because their wages did not increase fast enough. Even though they did increase, they started from a farther, they started below uh, way below in terms of their wages. So that increase really wasn't even enough to sustain in comparison to inflation. Whereas if you made $100,000 a year or more, you're doing okay Be because uh, inflation in energy is a smaller portion of your total income, right? So this is all a, a redistribution of wealth as it is. So we have an unfair system that has very bad incentives. And we talk about this in Bitcoin a lot, like bad fiat incentives, and, and they harm people. So in a way, switching to a different monetary system is actually a redistribution of wealth in a different way, in a way that is not as coercive. 
So I think that it, it can happen, but you have to change the way the monetary system works and it doesn't necessarily have to be through taxes. And then the other thing is that you also don't necessarily need a central government to provide these things mm, for you. Okay. You can do that within your own community through mutual association or through mutual aid. And I think that people have forgotten this a little bit that you don't have to expect the government to do all these things. But at the same time, the government has to allow you to have the power to make these choices within your own community. And so what I would argue is like, you could have many societies, let them do what they what they deem is best for them. Let's decentralize that power. And the ones that I think provide the best in terms of well-being are the ones that most people are going to want to participate in. And Absolutely. Bitcoin, I think, is just one way to get us out of this horrible system and into another one, because a deflationary currency mm -hmm. is in opposition to debt, right? Yeah. No reasonable person will want to engage in a loan with 10% interest, knowing that you can easily calculate what, you know, what your purchase power will be with that money later on, right? It would be very hard to pay that back. So... I think that we, we have to kind of reframe the narrative around this in terms of what is wealth, what is the distribution of wealth and, and how the existing system actually distributes wealth in an, in a very unfair way. Absolutely. And, and, and wow, we have we it, and this is what I've always said. And Phil, we've always said this, right, is that we have a lot in common. Um, and at the end of the day, I think a lot of the conflict comes from the fact that this money is stealing from you inflation is stealing from you and you're absolutely right it, it inflation is catastrophic to the lower and middle classes that don't have the means to benefit from asset inflation they don't have the means to save in equities or the st or stock they they make their money in cash and they save in cash and then they get completely stolen in cash and it's you're absolutely right it's a wealth redistribution from the lower middle classes back to the top one percent and back to the government so 100 percent. so fumble uh what are your thoughts on and and i'm gonna kind of pass you on something that jin said do you believe in coercive wealth redistribution do you believe in in some type of redistribution that needs some type of coercion in order to fund some type of uh you know uh medicare for all or education for all what are your thoughts on that fumble no i don't absolutely not um i i well i won't speak for speak for jin but i i would say that we we both lean more anarchist than statist um as i mean i think jin nailed nailed it with what she, what she was just saying you know i think that um when things are kind of redrawn uh to you know bitcoin kind of carves out a world in which we can um uh, make our decisions and organize on a more voluntary basis and we can car carve out those things and often it's the state that actually gets in the way so you know i i, I sometimes see in the examples in america of you know, people that get punished for collecting rainwater or, uh, you know, like uh, people made an initiative to um, build some build some little shacks, like some nice wooden homes for homeless people. And then the state comes in and destroys it. I find that actually the state is the one, the, 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 the force that um, makes these things difficult and fosters a dependence so that we're always looking to that central point. So no, I don't. I don't think we need uh, that kind of coercion. And um, and uh, on the redistribution front, like again, Jin nailed it. Like I see the state as uh, redistributing from poor to rich and from the taxpayer to private hands. You know, so I think I I have a faith in humanity that uh, most people are good. And yeah, you get some bad apples. I think generally, like there's there's a sickness in society, partly from 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 fear, and in my opinion, partly from capitalism and and a lot of the, the kind of pressures that are on society. And I'd like to think that if we have, if everyone has a more solid base, uh, then we can form those networks, those communities, and we can, um, you know, really, you know. If we want, I'm sure voluntarily everyone would want to make sure that we don't have people dying on the street because they don't have like basic, you know, uh, healthcare or something. Yeah. You know, so, so, yeah. so, uh, so one last thing, and I know this is a big, uh, big aspect of the political laugh, is the the aspect of wealth inequality, right? Um, 
how do you propose to level that playing field without coercion, without some type of tax scheme to take from one group, take it from the productive class and give it to, you know, uh, the less fortunate and, and whatnot? How do you put how do you propose we do that without some type of coercion, without some type of state in order to enforce that? I think these are very difficult questions to answer at least in a very short form because there this can happen one of two ways right it could happen in a gradual way in a transition from one society or one system into a different system or it could have been in a very abrupt way in which you effectively have an economic collapse and you're forced ultimately to rebuild from these ashes and and in that sense you kind of start from a clean slate uh, but it's it's a tumultuous and it, it will be a very painful one. And I, I think that the latter is more likely right now because I don't see our governments actually changing trajectory or having the ability to do that. If that if they could, there would certainly have to be some types of reforms, I think, and changes in the way that money works. And there's you know, there's some ideas around that. I think ultimately switching at least towards uh, Bitcoin uh, would be useful because a city, for example, could acquire Bitcoin miners and they could use those trans transaction fees to invest into their community, into public works. And that I think is very empowering and a very unusual thing that doesn't come around too often. That sort of, sort of effectively, I mean, it, you can think of the transaction fee almost like a tax on using the network, right? I mean, you the the fees that we pay when I send you know when I send something to Fumble, you know I send him a few sats, right? I mean those fees then go towards the people who are mining, and, and they're mining, they're they're serving a purpose. They get the block subsidy because they're securing the network and they're preventing the double spend and et cetera, et cetera, right? So in a way, it's like a toll. I'm paying a toll to use the road. Okay, that's fine. I agree to it. I, I said I agree. This this makes sense. But I could benefit from that too if I'm also mining, and then I can use that to the benefit of my community. So I think that's one way. That's that's one possibility with Bitcoin to do that. I just don't. I don't see governments wanting to let go of the power to let things like that happen too easily. I think that's the issue. Is that governments are have, have consolidated power so much and have such a monopoly on violence that they're not going to be very willing to let much of that go. I mean, you can see what they did to, to Ross uh, and, and, to, and to Julian Assange and Chelsea Manning for, for stepping up and, and you know, showing the truths of, of government. So, you know, this is, this is the reality is that I don't think any of this will come very easily Progressives, they look towards government, they see it, it's there, they see the power that exists there, and they think, well, there's so much power to change things there. If I could only reform it so that it would benefit people and minimize this inequality, then that power could be used for good. But the problem is, is that this power switches between players, right? every four years. And then on top of that, like there's so much money in politics now, especially after the Citizens United, that it's a, it's really hard. It's really hard for people to actually get milk any good out of the system. So I think progressives have to realize that maybe you need to just completely change the system. And I see that a lot in, with, with, with the climate movement. A lot of climate activists are starting to realize that. And they're like, you know, we just need a full system change. They just don't yet fully grasp what that means, that it's actually, you have to start at the economic level or even the monetary level. Of course, you fix the money, fix the world. And uh, what you said was so true. And look, I, I, I fundamentally believe this. I think that the left, the way that the left views the world is a whole lot better than the way that the right views the world the, the 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 right though is a little bit more based in you know tangible reality and the left is like a more idealistic and you know that that's and that's where the clash happens right um and look if you look at communism just the idea of communism on paper it's beautiful 
right? The problem is that you need someone to enforce that equality, and that usually, you know, requires coercion. That usually requires violence. That usually requires guns, right? That's why it doesn't work. And you, you guys are absolutely right. Capitalism is not a perfect system. It, I just happen to believe that it's the best system that we do have, and hopefully, Bitcoin fixes the crony capitalism aspect of it that hurts everybody, right? And um, hopefully that's where it goes. But anyway, we're running out of time. Phil, do you have any closing thoughts, my friend, before we move on? Yeah, just quickly, I wanted to go back to a point uh, that Jin made about the uh, the miners, uh, the miners transaction fees. I thought that that was a very good point, right? We pay these fees for a specific quality of service and for transaction finality. Right. Like we end up paying we end up paying fees when we do the transactions on the Bitcoin network. And that helps ensure that our transaction ends up in the next block and that we get the transaction finality, which is interesting because the government, interestingly enough, if you've ever gone through multiple government services. OK, and I am from Canada, so I have gone through the healthcare system, both in America and Canada. And I can tell you that there is a serious lack of quality of service. You are paying a fee. But you are not getting what you are paying for. And that's kind of part of the problem. So I do agree that, yes, in, in the Bitcoin space, we are, quote unquote, paying that tax, but we're actually getting what we pay for. Whereas in the real world, we are paying way more than our fair share and we are not getting the value for it. Anyways, just Abs my thoughts. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll wrap it all on that. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. This is part two of the progressive case for Bitcoin. We're going to do a series. We're going to get more and more progressives on the show ask them some questions, riff on this a little bit. But anyways, Phil, there was an open source software release today. Why don't you tell everybody about it? Software releases brought to you by CypherSafe. Check them out, cyphersafe.io. Don't store your seed on paper. That's way too risky. Even two or three papers, it's not enough. Store your seed in the Cypher wheel or the all new Cypher grid. They both come with a tamper resistant wire and the grid comes with a punch tool. All right, we've got the Bitcoin Seed Tool version 1.0.5 that was released. It's down below in the show notes. Guys, don't forget to check us out on our audio-only platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor. If you want to stream us sats, check us out on Fountain.fm. You could stream us sats through Breeze. Awesome. Thank you, Phil. All right, guys, before we go, I want to give a very, very special shout out to our clothing sponsor, RepresentLTD.com. I'm wearing the black camo hoodie. Phil's wearing the gray hoodie. They also have Bitcoin merch, and they're coming out with simply Bitcoin merch very soon. You can take advantage of the promo code down below to get 10% off anything off the RepresentLTD.com store. I also want to give a very special shout out to our awesome guest. You can go give a Margot a follow. Her Twitter is at Jin underscore Urso. You'll find her Medium articles there. And of course, fellow pleb at FumbleBTC. Shout out to these guys. I love having, like I said, Bitcoin is apolitical. It's for everybody. We love having progressives on the show giving them their perspective this is a peaceful revolution and it includes everybody but anyways guys that was our show if you enjoyed the show do you want to do smash that like button of course if you're going to continue hearing the bitcoin news from the police palette perspective and the catastrophic fails definitely consider subscribing to simply bitcoin and we'll see you tomorrow guys for a brand new episode absolute power corrupts absolutely bitcoin fixes this